In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. morning. It's good to be together today. It's good to be together and worship together. It's been an awesome morning so far. Uh, we have a ton of parents that are actually upstairs right now, middle school and high school parents uh, in a parent meeting. We have all kinds of things that are taking place in Next Generation. The church is alive. The church is alive. And we know that it's been a difficult week. We know it's been a difficult couple weeks. We know that things continue to adjust. And here's our commitment. We will do the best that we possibly can to follow Jesus together. And so we're, we are jumping into week two of this series that we're going into for an entire year, as Austin has shared with us. The series is entitled Core 52, and we're going to break this up into 12 different teaching series. Before we get into week two, as we just started last week with creation, before we get into week two, we've been waiting to share some really awesome news with you guys. And, uh, and we didn't know when exactly to do it, but we weren't going to do it right in the middle of Christmas because some things were still taking place. But we wanted to give you an update on our Thanksgiving offering. And I know you're like, Jay, Thanksgiving, that was a while ago. I know, it was. But here's the thing. We set out in the month of November to give $100,000 above and beyond our normal giving. And it just kept coming in. And so we were waiting to kind of get a, a final figure so we knew what we were going with. Our Thanksgiving offering was, we were set out to really bless three of our mission partners, three of our missionary partners, people that we walk alongside of that are doing different works for Jesus throughout the globe, throughout our state, and throughout our country. And we picked three. We were led to three this year. And so of the 100000 you may remember if you were with us at that time, $50,000 was going to go help purchase a home for one of our mission, missionary partners, Shefki and his family, in Kosovo. I, it blows my mind, but people that know Shefki very, very deeply, John and Ruth Chestnut, are with us today, right here in this service. So as we do that, I just want to welcome them. So welcome, John and Ruth. And uh, that, that is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm not kidding you. The 50000 of our 100000 is going to help Shefki purchase this home uh, that, that has gone to them. They're, they are going to be able to purchase the home and continue on in that missionary work. That's awesome. 30000 was set aside to help purchase land in India to help with a church plant that we have partnered with there through Matthew Matai and our partnership there over in India. Matthew, Matthew was with us in September. Some of y'all remember that. So that was 30000 And then the remaining $20,000 was going to go to and is going to the Children's Home of Ohio, who really helps encourage and support the most vulnerable children within our state. Some of the most vulnerable children in our state. Well, our goal was $100,000. So money just kept coming in, so we waited, and our final total was, you ready for this? $132,716. So $32,000 above, which all, all glory, all glory to God and honor to his people. We get to follow Jesus together. This is what this means. There was no one gift that was like, oh, it blew our mind because one person or one family gave $100,000 and then the rest of us just kind of gave a few dollars here and there. And it came. No, this is, this is our church together on this gratitude offering. And so what we've done over the last several weeks is as the leadership of our church has been praying and asking, okay, how do we additionally bless one of these three partners? What do we do with this $32,716 that needs to go to one of those three? Through much prayer, through some wisdom, we thought it best to actually give an additional blessing to the Children's Home of Ohio to help with one of their newest ministries. One of their newest ministries is helping to support and love those who have been caught up in the horror and the evil of sex trafficking within the state of Ohio. And so, yes, we want to give to help support those people. This is what it means to follow Jesus together. Huge, huge blessings. 
as we look to Jesus, as we follow him, and as we do that together. Let's pray a prayer of blessing upon that. Let's pray together. Lord, we are thankful for your grace and your mercy and your generosity to us. And in turn, we know we are blessed by you to bless others. And that's not just with dollars. It's with who we are. Lord, thank you. And may these things continue to bless your work that goes far beyond just the walls that make up our time of worship just right here on Sunday morning. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's jump into week two of our Core 52 series. If you have a Core 52 book, great, you got that. We have more coming in, as Austin said, next week. If not, you can get on Amazon, you can get it real quick, we go from there. But we are in week two. Last week, we, uh, we began our first Core 52 series, which is entitled Beginnings. Why is it entitled Beginnings? Because we are going to the beginning of God's word. Core 52 is the best resource that we've found to help us understand better the Word of God. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and turn to the beginning of God's Word to a book that is known as the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to start digging in. Last week we talked a little bit about creation. This week we're going to talk a little bit about identity, identity. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we find this verse. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens in the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So as followers of Jesus, we're going to take God at his word, that that's exactly what happened. God created. If you've ever read Genesis chapter 1 before, some of you all have, some of you have, nah, I've never really read Genesis. I, I have some friends that are followers of Jesus, and they've never read the book of, uh, of Genesis before. They've read chapter 1, 2, and 3, maybe chapter 4, and then they just kind of they give up and get lost on that. I mean, Genesis is a big book. It's 50 chapters long, and there's a lot that takes place in the first book. But Genesis chapter 1 is fairly, fairly familiar. We know that God creates. The first thing that God creates is light. Why? Because if you're a scientist among us, you know nothing can exist without some form of light. And so God creates light, and then he creates sky, and then he creates water, then land in vegetation, and then he creates day and night, and then he creates animals, those that live in the sea and those that live on the ground. But then God really gets down to work, and he creates his most beloved creation, us. Is that self-centered? Is that egotistical? No, it's biblical truth. God's greatest creation was us. He declares that, not us. He declares that we are his greatest, greatest creation. We are the only thing that God creates in his image, in his likeness, and we're gonna see in our core verse today, he says in our image, in our likeness. So who's our? Who's that? Look at the core verse of today. Genesis chapter one, verse 26 is our core verse. Mark Moore is gonna give us a core verse each week. 126 is the core verse for today. In Genesis chapter one, verse 26, here's what we find. Then God said, Pause. I love that it is stated that way. How were we created? Why were we created? How did creation take place? Because God said so. It's like the parent. Go to bed. Why? Because I said so. That's why you need to go to bed. Stop doing that. Why? Because I said so. I don't have to explain myself to you. I brought you into this world. Well, technically your mom did, but I'll take you out of it. You know, I love that it said, then God said, then God said, let us Make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Did you notice that? You see, it's important that we not only read the word of God, not be overwhelmed by the word of God, not, not open this thing up and be like, holy smokes, how am I going to know all this stuff? Um, you're not, and neither am I. There are going to be so many things that are revealed to us on the other side of eternity in heaven about the eternal word of God. But that doesn't say, oh, it confuses me, so I'm just going to set it up over there. Now open this thing up. And as we open it up and then we slow down, we're going to catch up on things like this. We're going to catch up. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Us and our imply that there's more than one here, right? There's more than one here. You know, let, let's say you, you had some people over for Christmas or for New Year's. You had some folks over to come over for the Rose Bowl and watch the Ohio State game or whatever. It is. You had people over to your house. And let's assume that you don't just live by yourself. I know some of us do. 
But let's assume that you don't live by yourself. You welcome somebody into the front door. What's the appropriate thing to say? Welcome to my house? Guys, if you're married and you say that, uh, duck, because your wife's about to slap at you. Welcome to our house. That's right. So it implies that there's more than just one. So who's all at this creation party? Look, look at what the core verse says, Genesis 1:26. Let's look at it again. Let God said, let us, that's plural, God singular, technically, us, plural, make mankind, create mankind in our plural image, our plural likeness. Who's all at this creation party? May we remember, this is why we love doing this series, may we remember in all of creation, we have God the Father, God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God the Son, Jesus, all within creation. All within creation. This is what it means, our image and our likeness. So now that we have a better understanding that God the Father, God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, his Son, they are all there in creation, what is the image of God? What is the likeness of God? What does that mean? Well, let's read verse 26, Genesis 1, 26, in context. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness. Here it is. So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Look at verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So what does it mean that we are created in the image, in the likeness of God the Father, God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God the Son, Jesus? What does that mean? How are we created like God? Because that can sound egocentric. We're created like God, but it's biblical truth. It's biblical truth. What, what does this mean? You know, there are 45 different ways that we can go with this. You know, we were created in the image of God to be like this. We were created in the image of God to be like this. We were created in God's likeness because this. I mean, there are so many different ways that we can go with this. But the word of God in this series, Core 52, is not meant to confuse us. It's meant to help us understand the purpose of God and the word of God. It's, help us, it's meant to help us on our journey with Jesus. So let's simplify it a bit this morning. Let's just simplify it a bit. We have identified through Core 52 and through the reading of scriptures, two unique ways that we have been created in the image and likeness of God. The first is this. We are uniquely created in the image and likeness of God to be in community with God in community with one another. To be in relationship with God in relationship with one another. This is why it's important as we slow down and read the core verse, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, God created us in community so that we could be in community with him, with God, God the Father, God the Spirit, and God the Son, Jesus, and with each other, to be in community with God and with each other. You know, I love, I love how Mark Moore, the author of Core 52, states, he reveals some of this biblical truth in chapter 2. Now, I know some of you, uh, you may be overwhelmed by a book. You, you may have grabbed the Core 52 book. You know, you can get it here next week. You may have grabbed this thing off Amazon. And you look at it be like, this is a big book. It, it's like two or three, maybe four pages each chapter. But I love how Mark Moore states in chapter two as he reveals some of this idea of biblical truth and community. This is a direct quote from Mark Moore from page 13. Mark Moore states this. He says, since God is in community, so are we. Since God is in community, so are we. Look at this. Young adults often leave their families. We have some young adults with us here in service, and we have a ton of young adults that are with us online, that are with us online. Listen to this. He said, young adults often leave, leave their families, communities, and traditions to quote, unquote, find themselves. We've heard this before, right? We've heard of that. They go find themselves. This can get one lost. We'll never know our true selves in isolation. We will never know our true selves in isolation. We know ourselves to the extent that we are known. All of us are the sum of our relationships. It's about relationship. Though our characteristics are unique, our character is forged on the anvil of community. Look at that. 
It's forged on the anvil of community. Why does this matter? Let's slow down and read this. Because we live in a world that champions individualism and achievements that seldom bring the satisfaction they promise. Ho. Let's read it again. Because we live in a world that champions individualism and achievements which seldom, seldom bring the satisfaction they promise. Is that not true? Is that not true? In terms of the church, this matters because we mistakenly try connecting with God only personally. Only person. It is my personal relationship with Jesus. Yes, but it is actually our relationship with Jesus. He says this matters because we mistakenly try connecting with God only personally when we were designed to experience him in community. We were designed specifically to be in relationship with God and relationship with each other. How's that going for you? You know, sports fans, have you ever bought like an authentic t-shirt or an authentic jersey? You know, maybe, maybe you made a mistake like, like I do. I, I try and buy authentic Cleveland Browns stuff, and then it's worthless halfway through the season. What, what does the tag say? It says, specifically designed to the exact specifications of, you know, the Cleveland Browns or the NFL or whatever that is. We were created. We were designed. We were engineered specifically to be in relationship with God through faith in his son Jesus, and relationship with one another, with each other. That's how we were designed. This is the first and greatest way that we were created in the image and likeness of God, to be in community with him and in community with each other. Let's tackle the first one for a second. Are you in relationship with God? Big question. That could be answered 28 million different ways. But are you in relationship with God through faith in Jesus? You know, we may know each other very well. We may not know each other at all. But I'm going to ask you that you trust me on this. You do not want to be in a relationship with God without faith in Jesus. Because you're not good enough. And neither am I. But because of what Jesus has done for us, we can be in a relationship with God forever that comes through the grace of God, that extends the love of God to us both now and forevermore. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who gave his life for you on the cross And even more, defeated death three days later when he walked out of his own tomb. tomb. I love how my friend Bob Goff says this. He says, when he walked out of the tomb and kicked death in the teeth so that we could have life both now and forevermore. Do you believe this to be true? You see, this is what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. This is what it means to have our first identifying factor as God's creation. Do you believe that Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be? Have you chose to trust Jesus with your life? Have you confessed your faith that Jesus is the son of the almighty God? Have you decided to be all in? And have you decided to follow Jesus and been baptized into your faith in Jesus? And are you walking with Jesus? Are you on a journey with Jesus? Only you can answer that question. Whether you're with us online or you're with us in person. If you'd like to talk with somebody about that, we would love to sit down and talk with you about that. If you have questions about that, we'd love to sit down and and talk questions about that. Are you on a journey with Jesus? And then question number two, are you on a journey with Jesus with a few trusted friends? Are you on a journey with Jesus with a a few trusted friends? Because we all need them. We all need them. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're like, hey, I believe in Jesus, and I'm following Jesus, but I'm not really following Jesus with with hardly anybody. Okay, well, let's change that. 
you know, we as a church, we, we are trying to do everything that we possibly can to create a culture, to create opportunities for us to follow Jesus together. Now, there are times that, that I like to walk right up to the line, and there's times that I self-admittedly probably cross the line. Here's going to be one of the times that I walk right up to the line. Do you realize how hard it is to do church, to do people stuff in this day and age? When the world says, oh, hunker down, bunker down, like get away. You know, you launch a huge series like Core 52, we're like, hey, we're going to have groups everywhere, people are going to be everywhere, and it's like, run for the hills. And you're like, oh, crap, why did we do this? I just said that from the stage, didn't I? <laughs> you know, I'm, it's craziness. But there is a way to be in relationship with one another, even in very, very difficult times. You know, we have several groups that are going to journey through Core 52 together. We have several people that are serving together. The Hunger Bowl is a phenomenal opportunity to get to know some people. You know, is it hard to get to know new people? For a lot of us, it is. Why? Because it takes time and commitment and it takes some patience. And we've never lived in a time that is less patient and more accessible than I want it now and I mean now. I mean, we live in a time where you can order something online and it can get there less than 24 hours to your doorstep. We're not used to waiting on things. But relationships take time. Are you following Jesus? And are you following Jesus with some people? If you are not, we just simply invite you to go to Guest Central, located right here, right here by our front doors, and say, I I'd like to get connected some way, somehow. And our people will help get you connected. Please hear us on this. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time because we're kind of weird, but here's the thing. So are you. So are you. And it takes time to get to know one another. And then we figure out our weirdness is just the unique way that we're creating the image of God. We're created in the image of God, the likeness of God, to be in relationship with God, relationship with one another. Another Second way of the many ways that we are, the second way that we see we are created in the image of God to love deeply. To love deeply. You see, God is love. The core verse of the Bible, the one core verse of the Bible, and I know people will disagree with me on this, but whatever, is John chapter 3, verse 16. In my opinion, and that's what it is, the core verse of the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so what? Loved. For God so loved you and me and everybody in this world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him, there's the clause, whoever believes in him shall not perish, shall not die, but have life forever. God is love. God created, why? Because God is love. God desires to have a relationship with us, why? Because God is love. God desires for us to have relationships with other people, why? Because God is love. And God has created us to love. You know, God blesses us because God is love. God teaches us because God is love. The one true God is the God of true love. He is not the world's counterfeit definition of love. The one true God, the God of the scriptures, is the God of true love. I'm going to step to the line again. I don't care what your yard sign says. He's true love. God is true love, and he shows us his true love through the greatest gift he could ever give us, his one and only son, Jesus. Not the world's counterfeit definition of love. God is love. Do you embrace that love? God has created us to love deeply. Why? Because he created us to be deeply loved by him. And as we are deeply loved by him, guess what? We are able to, by his power, by his spirit, deeply love other people. Deeply love other people. Love is hard, isn't it? Love is our greatest blessing, but love is hard. You know, love is hard when opinions fly rampant. Love is hard when we disagree with others. Love is hard when we feel like we're taking three steps forward only to take five steps back. Love is hard, but love is our greatest blessing. You know, I, I pray 
I pray that I never, ever, 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 ever forget the first time that our oldest daughter, Michael, the first time our oldest daughter, Michael, asked me a question about God. And I pray that when I'm on my dying bed, whether I get to know that day or not know that day, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I pray that I will never forget the first time that Michael asked me about God. She was about four years old, maybe three or four years old. I, I know our younger daughter Chandler was born, and they're three years, three months apart. So I know that she was born, so she was at least three and a half. And I, I got home from church, and you know, I think Addie had got home from school, and you know, Chandler was crying because she's a little infant. And so I grabbed Michael. I said, Michael, let's go take a walk around the block. And we walked around the block. This was in an old neighborhood that, that used to have sidewalks. And we were walk- I remember exactly where we were. I mean, I could probably pick out the sidewalk square of where we were. I remember the, the yellow coat that she was wearing. And I remember she just looked off into the sky as the sun was setting. And she just stopped, like dead in her tracks. And she looked up and she said, God, she said Daddy, how, how big is God? And then I stopped in my tracks, and I just captured the moment. I'm like, I I don't want to forget this moment. And I said, Michael, God is bigger than anything that we can ever comprehend. And I was like, she doesn't understand a word comprehend. i got to think through this again. I said, God is bigger than anything you could think of, Michael. And she just looked in amazement at the sky. I said, but I want you to remember something, that God and your daddy love you more than you could ever ever know. And then she just started walking again. (laughs) And I still stood there and I just watched her walk in a way as though she was walking towards God. You see, God has created us in his image and his likeness And you better believe there's something within us that says, I need a relationship with God and I need a relationship with other people. Are you in a relationship with God through faith in his son, Jesus? Are you in a relationship with a few other trusted people that also are following Jesus? Our life is the sum of our relationships. We will never be fully known in isolation. We will never be fully known away from Jesus, and we will never be fully known away from others that we have grown dear to that also follow Jesus. This is what it means to follow Jesus together. This is our true identity, first and foremost. Relationship with him, relationship with others. Not the world's counterfeit definition of all these things. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are present among us, that you are with us. Lord, that is your promise. And as Psalms 12 tells us that your promise, your promises are pure, like silver refined in fire seven times over. Your promise is that you are with us, and we are so thankful that you give us others along this journey as we journey with you and we journey with him. Lord, for those of us that are struggling in those relationships, we do ask for your help. We ask for your spirit to lead and guide us. Lord, we thank you that we could gather as a church today. We know that there's several people that are with us online that that wish they could be here, but for whatever reason can't. And we know that there's several people that are here today that are with us, and we are so encouraged by each other's presence of what it means to be in community with you and community with each other. Lord, as we come into a time of communion where we remember you, Lord, we ask for the direction of your spirit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.